Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you guys for watching the six month update on my reef tank behind me. Uh, so today I kind of want to talk about what I've been doing for the last few weeks. Uh, I've basically officially joined the PH hype train, so uh, so I'll go through all the different things I did in case they might be able to help you and show you if they kind of help me or not. So let's get to it. So I figured since we'll be trying all the new methods that have come out, uh, we would start with the most basic, which is going to be uh, a refugium. So basically what I did is pretty simple. Uh, we just got some shado here from the local fish store, uh, and then I got this anchor, aki, ak, something like that. Uh, refugium light from Amazon. This was pretty cheap, only a couple of bucks. I think it was like 15 or something on sale. Uh, but we have that basically just uh, trying to grow out this cheetah, which to be honest, hasn't been doing all that well. Uh, I believe sometimes um, cheetah just doesn't grow in some people's tanks and sometimes it does. It's not a thing about nutrients or lighting. It's just um, the tank itself is just kind of weird. Uh, like I've always mentioned, everybody's tank is just a little bit different so that, you know, just might be something. I mean, it hasn't died, but it hasn't grown either. Uh, another thing that's good about this, this type of setup is that um, it should be kind of like a reverse photo period. Um, so it should keep pH up a little bit. Now, by running this type of setup, I have noticed over the last uh, about two weeks or so uh, that pH has not gone up. Or honestly, it has, but by very little. I would say by about 0.02 which is obviously not very much, not even by a one decimal point, um, you know, which is substantial, but point of two, it's really not happening. Maybe I need more Chato in here, but um, growing this has not been that fast. So meh, as far as this option goes. Now, I may end up just keeping this Chato growing here. Uh, and the reason why, uh, besides pH, is that it actually does a really good job at keeping these copepods alive, uh, giving them kind of like a safe haven to live. There's a bunch of little snails in here as well, stomatellas. So this is kind of like a nice little breeding ground. So whether or not I get a pH boost through this, uh, I may keep this around just because it does actually serve a purpose other than uh, raising pH, which I do kind of like because, you know, pods, these little crustaceans, they are the bottom of the food chain, and that helps later on uh, with the fish in the top as they reach the, as they are the top of the food chain. Now on number two, uh, we tried something else, which was a reverse photo period, but only on the frag tank down here since I have nothing else in the other sump. I feel like doing a reverse photo period, you need actually a tank of equal size uh, to the main display in order to keep that pH up. It needs to be kind of near stocking. Uh, same thing when I did a reverse photo period for this little frag tank. Uh, number one, the corals, they kind of didn't like it. Um, yeah, they just didn't do all that great, so we ended up changing it back. But I mean, they survived, nothing died, they just didn't particularly enjoy that. And also, I did not see much of a difference in pH at all doing this reverse photo period. Uh, so I feel like if you maybe had a bigger sump, or if I was able to utilize both sumps, I might be able to get a good pH boost uh, during that nighttime period, but to me, Personally, that kind of just wasn't worth it. Uh, number one, if I was to start growing things in the other cabinet, I would also have algae growth on like my skimmer, for example, which would be super annoying to clean. And then also you might be kind of shocking their circadian rhythm, that, you know, natural sleep pattern of all the fish and like the anemones in there. I feel like that uh, might be screwed up too. So though it has its probable applications, I feel like that probably wasn't a great idea either. Now, option number three, which is by far one of the best options, is actually to do a CO2 scrubber, uh, which I kind of made here, as you can see. So uh, I got the pellets for it just right off of uh, Amazon and had it shipped to my home. Uh, this guy is a old D, what do you call it? 
DI canister. It's like a canister for your uh, for your RODI RODI filters. And uh, basically, I just took the filter out. I'm gonna unscrew that right here. We took the filter out that they usually used for the DI resin, and I put these guys into it. Uh, the only change that I made to this was I did go to Home Depot and purchase uh, these 3 8 inch fittings instead of the quarter inch uh, that you generally use for your RODI. So I was able to put the tubing on top of the skimmer intake right there. Now this actually by far had the best uh, results. It raised my pH by 0.2 points. Uh, which is actually quite a lot. And to me, this is by far the best option if you really have a pH problem. Say for example, your pH is lower than uh, eight, for example. Now there are a couple things that I don't like about uh, this method. Number one, if you do use one of these, uh, you know, just old DI filters that you have, the Suction is reduced uh, in your actual skimmer when you put it on. I kind of had an issue where I reduced the bubble rate because there is a bit of resistance uh, going through this tube um, with the air. So you do have to actually kind of turn your skimmer up a little bit um, because it isn't drawing as much air. Now there's one thing I kind of didn't like and is that if you just uh, leave, for example, just air, um, just bring in fresh air from the outside this whole unit right here lasts about i would say three or so days uh, you can kind of see it in my chart there it did not last very long uh, now a lot of people have solved that by essentially putting the tube to the intake here and then recirculating it by putting the other end of the tube into like a hole in the cap of your skimmer. So it's just recirculating the same air constantly. And people have said they get about two to three weeks out of it, which is pretty actually darn decent. Now, I personally won't be going this route, and the reason being is that, number one, my pH isn't that bad to begin with. My pH has always been within like the 8.1 kind of area, so it's not terrible. Number two, this thing is super ugly. Even if you get the recirculating CO2 scrubber uh, off of like BRS, the one that's made specifically for scrubbing, it's still not that good looking. And uh, having the tubing kind of just all over the place inside the unit itself is very annoying. And also number three, the cost. Uh, so the one bag, if I remember correctly, was about $30. Uh, just to fill one of these up, it takes about $15 each refill, so uh, you get about two refills per bag. And to me, that price honestly isn't very good compared to some other methods uh, that would be a lot cheaper. So for now, um, this is a good option, especially if you have, you know, some pretty bad pH issues, but... I'm going to be trying some other options just to see if we might be able to do something, you know, a little better, a little bit more cost effective, or something, for example, that doesn't only do just pH. Now with that, what that leads to is kind of what I have here in this box. Um, as you can see, we can see kind of uh, who this came from. But uh, that's going to be it for today for this episode. In the next episode, we will go through this box. You will see what's up if you already don't know what's up. And uh, yeah, that is it for today. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. And I'll see you on the uh, next episode. Peace.